right, welcome everyone to the weight connection because we don't have a weight problem in Australia, don't we? <laughs> have you heard of the eat right for your type? Yeah. With a blood type? Yeah. Okay, so what is your type? I'm going to show you a number of types. You tell me which one is yours, okay? Okay, so which one, which one is you? Okay. Now, from the beginning, from the first one to the last one, they're all what? Dogs. All of them. From the Chihuahua to the what? To, to, the, to the Great Dane. They're all dogs. True? Now, that is... Uh, well, it looks like a Dalmatian, but I, I was told that it was a Grand Dane. Uh, and, and the other one is a Chihuahua. Okay, a Mexican Chihuahua. Now, I, I want to ask you a question. Let's say that gra Grand Dane is 45 kilos, okay? And the Chihuahua will be two, two kilos? If? Okay, two kilos. One is 45 the other one is only two. Which one of them is overweight? None. Have, that can be. Both of them are dogs. One is 45 kilos. The other one is two kilos. Which one is overweight? The chihuahua is overweight because it's two kilos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, we're trying to draw a point here is relevant to you. Now, that's, those are overweight dogs. Will you, will you agree with me? They are overweight dogs. Now, that's a greyhound. Is that greyhound underweight for the race, for the, for the breed? No, it's not. It's a greyhound. That's how greyhounds look like. What about that greyhound? That's underweight. Can you see what I'm trying to, to, to make a thing here? There's a difference. So what, who is a chihuahua here? Don't raise your hand. But I had ladies that have come to see me, and they just, when I do the BMI, they just on the right on the 18, right on the 18. And she goes, I want to put, I'm on the 18, I want to put on weight. And I said, how were you at school? I uh, was always skinny. And uh, were you the tallest of the school? No, no, always the tiniest. Um, and what about in high school? Are oh, you saying, you know, I always seem to be the skinny, the skinny, tiny little girl. And um, so what is she? She's, she's a chihuahua. And you know the other question? You know what was the other question? Are you married? And she goes, yes. Does, is your husband in love with you? Was he in love with you when he married you? Said, I think so. <laughs> does, he like, does he like you? Like you, you li sorry, he likes you? And she goes, I think so. And said, and your problem was? What is your problem? That I'm skinny. It's like this greyhound. <laughs> what is his problem? What will happen if this greyhound is 45 or 50 kilos? He will be overweight. What will happen if you see a San Bernard that, that normally you can reach up to 70 kilos? That's why you need to have a very big budget to feed that dog. Uh, so you've got a San Bernard, and that San Bernard is, let's say, 35 kilos. Now, he's 35 kilos. What will happen to that San Bernard? Well, somebody, a neighbor will call the RSPCA because you're not feeding the dog. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to start understanding is what is the weight for your type? Look at those two monkeys there. Which one looks like the cranky old man? The right one. He looks like the cranky old man. Which one looks like the one that is wise and uh, perhaps even a bit younger 
the left one, well, they're almost the same age. The one is 20, say, 26 and the other one is 27 years of age. Do you know what that means in monkey years? Not in donkey's years, but in monkey years, that actually means nursing home age, past retirement. Yeah. They are almost on the last leg. Does it look almost in the last leg? No. Look at the, the, gym, the gym apparatus. They, they actually they have gym apparatus there. They actually do exercise and so on. Now, when they check the body fat percentage of this one on the left, it showed very, very similar to his younger years. Very similar to, to his younger years. When they check on this, the cranky one, look at the position also. One is like that. The other one is like this, probably dripping a little bit. The percentage increase by, you know, by a third. So, sorry. So, you, you, you increase three times, I should say. So, that's basically, he was actually following the human model. Okay? So, the human model, the current human model is that you, you are a very fit teenager, you know, with about 10 to 15 percent. I'm talking about males here. 10 to 15 percent body fat, you know, and sporty or whatever. Whatever you eat, you will burn it. You know, you can eat so many chips, so many McDonald's or whatever, you'll burn it. And then the exercise level drops, but not the McDonald's or the chips and everything else. So now you're not going to burn it. So now you start increasing your body fat. And then you go, you know, you go to, to retirement and then you go to a nursing home. And then they give you a nice broccoli and a nice jelly with cream. And what is going to be left in the table? The broccoli. This is the only one, the only peel known to man that can be, be proven over and over and over and over again in the laboratory for a standing lifespan. Would you like to know? It has to do with body fat. Would you agree with me? Yeah. They have body fat percentage. It has to do with body fat percentage and in which way the body is actually reacting to food. This method reduces blood pressure blood lipids, and inflammation. Increases fat burning, growth hormone, and metabolic rate. Do you understand what metabolic rate is? Metabolic rate is the rate of burning energy as I'm sitting down. There will be people here that as they sitting down here watching this lecture will be burning more calories than others. Don't you hate that? You know, those guys, you, you are, you are, you're training and training and training, and the other guy <laughs> doesn't do anything and he's burning because he has a higher metabolic rate. Okay. Okay. How many here have heard of glucagon? Can I see your hands? Wow. All of you have heard of glucagon. No. Okay. How many here have heard of insulin? Can I see your hands? Okay. Everybody has heard of insulin. Not everybody have heard of glucagon. Okay. So glucagon actually comes from the alpha cells of the pancreas. And insulin comes from the beta cells of the pancreas. They actually come from the same place. Everybody has heard of insulin. And if you don't have enough insulin, or if you are insulin resistant, you are going to be prescribed insulin, etc., 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 right? Everybody has heard of insulin. Nobody has heard of glucagon, despite the fact that on a daily basis, we ought to have both at some point through a 24-hour cycle. And everybody has heard of one and haven't heard of the other. Do you know why they haven't heard of the other? Because people don't have a problem with an excess of glucagon. Do you know why? Because the majority of the Western society don't know mentally what glucagon is, and the bloodstream haven't heard of glucagon for a long, long time. It never gets released. The situation needs, or the conditions need to be at a particular point in which glucagon can be released. But because we're living in an insulin society, our lifestyle only releases insulin. So what's the significance here?